Auburn is 7-0 against Louisiana Monroe. And we're underway. Washington is going to field it at the 9-yard line. Finds a little seam, good return, and gets it out close to the 35. Devon Washington returns from the 9-yard line. Jairus Edwards in on the tackle. And there's Cam Newton. Five rushing touchdowns, nine passing touchdowns. Has 292 yards of total offense on average per game. That is second in the SEC. He has really put himself in that Heisman conversation the last couple of weeks. Well, he's done it both ways. He's passing the football and running the football. And that's important for Auburn's offense to be balanced. He needs to come out today throwing the football, in my opinion. Uh, they're going to... The, the, Warhawk, the Warhawks are going to put eight to nine guys in the box. Look at him here. First play, Newton flares it out. It is caught by Terrell Zachary. He gets out of one tackle, and he's got enough for a first down and more. Finally brought down in midfield by Cameron Blakes. Zachary has great chemistry with Newton, and we were talking with offensive coordinator Gus Malzahn yesterday. He said, we're going to try to get it to Zachary more. And they should. He's a skilled player, and he can make plays in space. 15-yard pickup. Now on first down for midfield, they run it. Here's McCaleb. Up the sideline, and he could be gone. Touchdown, Auburn. Ontario McCaleb. Wow, that didn't take long. A 50-yard touchdown run for McKayla. Fastest guy on Auburn's team. Good blocking here. And once he hits the edge, see you later. You're not going to catch this guy. He can run fast. You know, watching him yesterday in... The extra point is good. Watching him yesterday in the walkthrough, he even walked through, he, he walked through fast, too. You know, he, he walks fast. I mean, he's a fast football player. You can't let a guy like that get on the edge. When he gets on the edge, uh, you're not going to catch him. Watch it here. Great crackback block by Adams. That, that's, that sprung him right there. And once he hit the edge here, forget about it. We receive. This is a touchdown. Two plays and they score. Watch his speed here. He, he runs like his feet are on fire. Watch him here. He just kind of runs. Now he slows down. Okay, that's good. That's good stuff. That's how you want to start the opening game. I mean, one pass, one run, touchdown. He led Auburn in rushing in the Clemson game. Ten carries for 81 yards and a touchdown. He breaks loose for a 50-yard score here. That's their offense. Quick strike ability. Now, that doesn't help your defense a whole lot because you could be on the field a little bit too much when they score touchdowns like that. But uh, defensively, you're not going to worry about that too much because as long as they keep scoring touchdowns, you have the ability to get after the opposing team. Gus Malzahn runs what he calls a rhythm offense. He wants to get to 80 plays today, get into a rhythm, work fast. But, you know, I'm sure if he scores like that on every series, he'll be fine with 40 plays. Well, what I like about it, they opened up with a pass. And that was important. And then they came back to the run. I mean, they're attacking the outside edges of their defense, of the, War, of the Warhawks' defense, and the fact that they're lining eight guys in the box, and they know if they can get outside the numbers with their skill, they can score touchdowns. Here's Wes Byram to kick it off. He tacked on that extra point. Auburn leading 7-0 after a two-play opening series. Here's Tavares May on the return. Changes directions, coming to the near side, and has a big hole to the 40. And driven down at the 47-yard line, redshirt freshman Tavares May will give Louisiana Monroe good field position on their first possession. That is a great call by Todd Bear. A reverse on the, on the kickoff. That, that's how you have to play. You have to play loose. You have to do things like this when you're on the road uh, playing against a big-time football team like Auburn, ranked 11th in the country. Here's Todd Berry. His offensive coordinator is Steve Farmer. And Colton Browning is the starting quarterback, a redshirt freshman. He works with an empty backfield out of the gun on most plays. He does here to start. And complete. Tavares May with the catch. He had to go up to get it. Takes a smack from Aaron Savage, but a nice play on first down. Yeah, nice throw uh, by the quarterback. It, it, it's a high throw, but it's to the boundary. And the fact that he read cover two, 
Uh, he saw the corner sinking up, and he threw it to the wide receiver. They're going to rule that incomplete, play. Coach. Caught it out of bounds, huh? Second down. They're going to rule that incomplete. There's Browning. And the team is very high on this guy. He beat out a fifth-year senior for the starting job, Trey Rebel. Second down and ten. Five receivers set for the Warhawks. Southpaw goes out to the backfield. And it is going to be a pickup of six yards on that play. Luther Ambrose on the reception. Ambrose, Gooden are going to be some guys to keep an eye on. Gooden, a senior running back. Third down four. Hoping to get him going. Ambrose, the second fastest guy in college football behind Jeff Demps. And there's Otis Peterson on defense, making his second career start. That brought to you by Russell Athletic. Third down and four here for Louisiana Monroe. And penalty flags. Colton Browning is pointing some fingers and looks like this might be on Auburn. Dead ball, Dead ball. Offside. offside. 90, 90 defense. defense. Five yard Five penalty yard results in a first down. It's on Nick Fairley. One of the better players on the defensive line in the entire conference. Good, good decision by uh, Browning, the quarterback, really. Uh, that slows your rush down, that double cadence. It keeps, them, it keeps the defensive line honest. So first down for Louisiana Monroe. Well, at the 42 of Auburn. Inside handoff to Gooden. And he's going to pick up a couple of yards. Gooden ran for 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns last year, but he's really yet to break out in a game this season, and the Warhawks are hoping that that might happen here today. It's not going to be easy against this defense of the Tigers, especially against the run. They're pretty salty. And if you watch the Warhawks here, they're not huddling up. This is, this is good. When you go on the road, you prevent Auburn from substituting them defensively. And you, what you'd like to do, just continue to move the ball, make first down, wear this defense down a little bit. Gooden goes in motion, high snap. Browning dumps it off underneath to May. He's going to get close to the 35-yard line before he's brought down by Craig Stevens. Stevens getting back to form after missing the first couple of games because of a team suspension. Starting to knock the rust off a little bit. So it'll be third down and three. Yeah, and their whole plan, uh, when you talk about the, the Warhawks, really is get the ball out of the quarterback's hand fast. Here, no backs. You know this is going to be a pass. He's going to get it out of his hands quick. Uh, he's got a manageable third down right now. Browning's going to take it himself, and down he goes! Right into the arms of Fairley. Fairley leads the SEC in sacks and tackles for loss, and he got both there. Yeah, he really did, and that was really a quarterback draw. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, look here. Now they're fourth down. Guess what? He's going to go for it. They're on the road. Why not? Wow. Now, how about that? On fourth down, Todd Berry is going to roll the dice here, fourth and seven. They don't make it a pretty good field position to Auburn. And we saw what they did with the, their last possession. And this play is not going to get off. Mark Austin is our referee. Dead ball, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And now Barry's going to send out the punting unit. Yeah, he has to uh, delay a game, get you. Uh, now you have to punt the ball. But I like, I, I like Coach Barry's strategy right now. He's playing loose, aggressive. Uh, he knows he's an underdog playing on the road. You have to take some chances. Monroe, 3-34 and 34 and 1 all-time against SEC opponents. We've already lost to Arkansas this year. They will go to LSU 
later this season in November. Aaron Munoz gets the punt away, and it's going to bounce inside the 15-yard line. Quinn Darius Carr lets it roll, and it takes a nice Warhawks roll, and it's going to be a long field now for Cam Newton and the Auburn Tigers. That quick strike offense looked good on their first possession. We'll see what happens next. And tackles for loss. Newton is split out to the near side, a wildcat look. And it's Cody Burns taking the snap on his feet to the five and pushed back at the six. So Cody Burns, you never know what's going to happen when he's on the field. The former quarterback already has a touchdown run and pass this year. Yeah, it seems like everyone in this conference has a wildcat kind of guy, and, and Auburn's guy is Cody Burns. You got to give the Warhawks uh, credit here. They, they played good defense, poised and, and kept it to a, a short game. Second down and seven after the three-yard pickup. Newton, little play fake, has time to throw. Man, wide open. Emory Blake, one man to beat. Goodbye. Ninety-four yards on that hookup. Emory Blake. Coming off one of the best games of his career last week. And they made this look way too easy, Coach. Yeah, well, the safety gets caught up in the play-action pass and sets his feet, and Blake runs right down the middle of the football field, wide open. This is becoming a habit. Two plays, and they score. Second time in a row. Yeah. Four possessions and two touchdowns. Byram tacks on the extra point. Emery Blake, his dad, Jeff Blake. And Cam Newton hustles down the field to congratulate the sophomore receiver. It's all Tigers here early. Emery Blake with a 94-yard touchdown reception. It is the longest pass play in Auburn's great history. Yeah, and, and Todd Berry has to... He has to be a little bit disappointed. You're talking about big play. It's one thing if they w work the ball downfield offensively. It's another thing when they allow you to have big plays. And right now, they, they've had two big explosion plays. Well, Troy Rampett's defense for Louisiana Monroe is a 3-3-5 look. And... Auburn said they kind of live on chances. They'll take chances. Like you said, they loaded the box that time, and it burned them. Yeah, it, re it really did, and it, it is a shame because um, you, know, you got to load the box because you want to stop the run, and you really want to force them to pass. And obviously, when you force them to pass, you have to be very detailed in your coverage responsibilities. And right there uh, on that big pass, Isaac Newsom should have been uh, at the free safety position, and he got sucked up on the play action. Auburn hasn't even possessed the ball one minute yet today. 32 seconds on that first play, uh, first series, and uh, less than that on the second. There's Luther Ambrose on the return. Let's go back to that last play again. Watch, watch News Amir to you, right? You don't see him right away, but the, the play action sucks him up 25. Now he realized, oh, I'm supposed to be in the middle of the field. Guess what? Too late, we receive. That's two touchdowns in a row off of two plays. That's not very good. Now we'll see what Louisiana Monroe can do to answer. This offense has been struggling to score, averaging only 314 yards of total offense and just 16 points per game. That's 114th in the country. On first down, they will run. It's good. Looking for operating room on the near side. From stiff arm at the 24 and driven out of bounds by Etheridge. And there is a flag down. Zach Etheridge pushed him out. We'll see if it was a little bit of a late hit. Nope, it's going to go against Monroe. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And, and this really hurts you. Coming on the road, you know you're the underdog. A couple things you cannot allow to happen. Obviously, fouls, foolish fouls, lining up correctly. And the next thing is big plays defensively. You can't allow teams to have uh, Auburn to have big plays. 
they've fallen into the trap on both throws already early in this football game. That's not good. You see the game trends. All Auburn, just four plays on offense, two scores. Browning will send three receivers out to his right. Has two to the near side. Again, it's typical to see nobody in the backfield with Browning. The lefty comes to the near side. It's complete at the 30. Zarell Sanders will walk it out of bounds at the 32 and close to a first down. Looks like they got it. The, the Warhawks have a good plan. They understand that they need to attack the perimeter of Auburn's defense. Short passes where the quarterback can get the ball out of his hand, get it to your skilled players so they can make five or six yards. That way you continue to possess the ball and drive the ball down the field. Browning against Southeastern Louisiana last week passed for 249 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Also ran for 75 and a score. Send a tight end in motion. Play fake, now rolling out. Juggled, caught. At the 43-yard line and then pushed back. That's Ambrose. He is the team's leading receiver, also the second fastest man in college football. He has a 10.12 100-meter time. But Jeff Demps, who won the Nationals in the 100-meter, did a sub-10-second 100-meter, the guy from Florida. I don't know, I, I, and I play football, I don't know how you run that fast. I mean, I, I would want the experience of running that fast. Just see how it feels. That's got to feel pretty good when you're the fastest guy on the field. They run like they have springs under their <laughs> shoes. First down and 10. Browning sets and throws and complete again out close to midfield. It's Kevin Steed who is starting for the injured Alvin Jordan this week. He is the team's number one tight end. Aaron Savage wrapped him up. It's a gain of six yards, brings up second down and four. Now the Warhawks have a good plan. They continue to throw short passes. Auburn, what they need to do defensively, they need to crowd the receivers. In other words, get up on them. They're walking up on them a little bit now. Don't allow them these short passes. The thing is, Auburn has been wary of giving up big plays in recent weeks. That's been one of their problems. Haven't done that as of yet. Here's Browning, fakes the handoff, and he is smothered. And there is Fairley again, big number 90. The junior from Mobile, Alabama, and he is becoming a household name here in the SEC. Yeah, he's, he's really athletic, big, comes off the ball fast. Uh, watch him here now. You, you can watch him. He, he's big and athletic, plays the run and the pass, and really is playing the run a lot better this year. He well, was pretty good versus the pass, but now he's really elevated his game playing the run uh, very good, too. Now ten and a half tackles for loss this year, which leads the Southeastern Conference. Browning on third down and eight. Got rid of it. And it's Ambrose again. And he is going to be close to the first down marker. You know, the one thing about Ambrose that the ULM staff has been telling us, he occasionally lacks effort. We've talked about the speed. They just want to see consistent effort from number 22. He has a lot of speed, and, and you can see it, especially when he gets in space. You've got to keep giving him the ball, because right now they've got a matchup problem. Auburn covering this guy and getting the ball quickly. Uh, and I think they have doing a great job that Browning is reading the coverages and getting the ball out of his hand. Second time that the Warhawks have been in Auburn territory. They're trying to make something stick. Out of the gun, Browning throws. It's complete. Boy, they are working it fast. This time, and get it in the hands of Anthony McCall, the number two wideout for the Warhawks. And that's all you want to do offensively. Continue to make four or five yards a game. That's all you need to do. Force Auburn to play a different coverage. Ted Roof, the second-year defensive coordinator, former head coach at Duke. He was the defensive coordinator at Minnesota before coming to Auburn. Browning running the option here. Late pitch. Gets it to Sanders. And he's got another first down for ULM. Sanders, the sophomore out of Shreveport. And we're seeing all kinds of different looks from this ULM offense. Formations, personnel, create deception, but they still keep attacking the same part of the football field. Outside the hashes, on the numbers. Get your athletic players the ability in space to make plays. Steve Farmer, the offensive coordinator, he played at Illinois State when Todd Berry was the head coach there. Now they're working together in Monroe. 
First down and 10 from the 34 of Auburn. Browning basically running the same play. Pitches it out to Gooden. And another good pickup. Aaron Savage tackles him out of bounds. And Gooden, who had a hamstring injury in the spring and in fall camp, kind of out to a slow start as we talked about, showing signs that he's coming around. Good rhythm in the Warhawks offense right now. They're moving the ball down the field. Got themselves in good position here. This is the 10th play of the drive for Louisiana Monroe. Big underdogs here on the road in Auburn today. Already down 14 to nothing. Browning looks to his right, throws out there, and it's complete to Jairus Edwards, and he's got a first down out at the 20. Edwards is the running back of the future, they think, at ULM, but there he catches a pass for a first down. And I really like Browning the decision-making process. He understands the coverage. He gets the ball out of his hand. He hadn't been hit yet, really, throwing the football because he's getting it out of his hand, and you wear Auburn's defensive linemen out because they can't get to him because the ball's coming out so fast. ULM has struggled inside the 20 this year. Three for six. Three touchdowns. They're inside the red zone for the first time today. Play fake. Bad look on that play. Colton Browning tried to shovel it out to his tailback. Well, really, the number one receiver was covered. He, he didn't try to force it, which was smart. He understands he's in scoring position right now, and he just tried to make a play with it, uh, really, to the outlet. But no harm, no foul. Second down and 10. I'm interested. Why are they running to the right when he's a left-handed quarterback? We've seen him do that like three or four times here today. You'd think that they'd go to his strength hand. Yeah, but, but I think what, what, what they're trying to do is really go opposite of his strength hand because, remember, the rushers are going to try to make him go that way. But the good thing about this kid, he's athletic enough to throw the ball going uh, really to his weak side. On second down, thrown complete to Farris May. And he's out of bounds at the 13-yard line. May, the redshirt freshman, out of Petal, Mississippi. Clock stops with 5.05 to go here in the first quarter. Third down and four coming up for ULM. They are marching the football. That was tight coverage by Bell. That was just a good throw by Browning. That, that was a very accurate throw. 13th play of this series coming up as this Auburn defense is looking for a stop. Browning with time, throws, tip, incomplete. Kevin Steed couldn't haul it in, it was a little high, and Etheridge was in the vicinity, couldn't come up with the pick. Now decision on the coach, on the head coach, what do you do? Well, he's gonna get points on the board. That's a, that's a good drive. You know what this drive has done? It's really relaxed them offensively, but really taking some pressure off them defensively. They've, they've, the Warhawks have kept their defense off the football field, which is a good thing. Roddy Jabor comes out. He's going to attempt a 31-yard field goal. He is 0 for 1 this year. That kick was blocked, and this play is going to be whistled dead. Penalty flags down. Prior to the snap, snap infraction, 74 offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. It's an Andrew Stout, one of the linemen. You can't do this on the road. Foolish foul. I call those foolish fouls. Ball doesn't move. You have to stay focused and you have to you have to concentrate. You cannot allow this to happen on the road. So now a 36-yard attempt for Jabor. Auburn's gonna try to block this. And points on the board for the Warhawks. Pretty impressive drive for the big underdogs here today. They're on the board for the first time, but Auburn has looked impressive. They've needed just four plays today to score 14 points. We'll see what happens on their third possession when we come back to Auburn. Louisiana Monroe with a 14-play drive that resulted in a field goal. One of the Auburn up men takes it at the 30-yard line. Watson Kirken. He stopped at the 35. There is a penalty flag there. There are flags on the play. Louisiana Monroe's had 19 plays today, just four for Auburn. But look at the score. That's some Big plays. Big plays kill you. They really do. 
Mark Austin trying to sift this problem out. Personal foul, face mask, 98 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Ray Stovall, the freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma, called for the penalty, and it's pretty obvious. His left hand on Letson Kirkin's face mask. It's good to be excited and have energy, but don't do foolish things. Don't hurt your foot. That hurts your football team. Relax. Play football. And now good field position again for the Tigers, and it's not like they've needed any help today from the 50. Newton from out of the gun. Flips it out to Emery Blake, who had that 94-yard touchdown play earlier. And he gets it into ULM territory. It's going to be an eight-yard pickup. Blake really starting to come into his own. Cameron Newton every week getting more and more comfortable with his receivers. And he talked about Blake. He liked, he liked Blake. He was a young player you know, that he didn't really like. Play fake. On the run, hits Lexington Kirk in the tight end. And he hurdles inside the 20-yard line. Lutzen Kirkin scored that go-ahead touchdown last week with a pretty catch in the fourth quarter. He's got the longest name in Auburn history. He's got some pretty sweet hands, too. Uh, the play action holds the backers, and Lutzen Kirk finds a little space, and, and Cam Newton finds the window and makes a good throw there. 22 yards and a first down. Auburn on the move again. Handoff to Michael Dyer. The dynamic true freshman making his third straight start. Remember last year he was the number one running back on that ESPNU 150 out of high school, and he has really hit the ground running in the SEC. And his strength is running inside. He's got a lot of power, strong, strong legs, and really has great vision running inside. Second down and eight. Rolling out here is Newton. And he'll hit Lutzen Kirkin again inside the five. <laughs> When you watch Cam Newton here, you know, he's doing a great job of holding the fake and holding the linebackers. Uh, you know, and, and he can throw it. He's got great arm talent. In other words, he can throw the ball fr from different places uh, with his arm, and, and that's a good thing for a quarterback. First down and goal to go. Newton standing tall in the pocket. Lobs it into the end zone and nearly picked off. Great coverage in the corner of the end zone. Darius Prelo. One of the uh, nation's leaders in pass breakups last year knocks this one down. Yeah, and Newton has a lot of time. He's reading the coverage. He's got man. He, 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 he really, if he's going to throw this ball, he's got to throw this ball high. I mean, that's a bad throw, throwing it low like that. He'll give it to Dyer here on second down, churning toward the goal line. He's going to be stopped short about a couple of yards away from a touchdown. Contarius Caldwell making the tackle. So now it's third down and goal as. The struggles this year for Auburn in the red zone have popped up. They really have, and I don't know why, because they've got one of the best offensive lines in the SEC. You need to just run this ball and, and score a touchdown. To the end zone again. And Cody Burns, the intended target, incomplete, and the field goal unit will come on. Good job, really, by the Warbirds defense. Well, excuse me, Warhawks defense. They held him here to a field goal. That, that's a good thing. But here again, Auburn with their offensive line, they should have had the ability here to really run the ball in the end zone and score. Here's Wes Byram coming on from 19 yards out. He missed a couple of field goals last week. Out of the hold of Neil Cottle, and it's good. So Auburn would have rather had a touchdown. They settled for three. It's 17. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Beautiful day in Auburn, Alabama. Finally, I think we're uh, reaching fall here in the south. It's, it's been humid the last month or so. Temps in the mid-70s today. Eight plays, 48 yards in 2 minutes, 22 seconds. Wes Byram with a 19-yard field goal. And Auburn now leads it. 17-3, Cam Newton. Hardly working up a sweat here today. Things have come pretty easy for that Auburn offense. Well, when you look at Auburn, they've had three possessions. They've scored on all three possessions. Uh, that's a good day offensively. 
Newton accounts for 84 of the team's 131 points coming into the day. That's 64%. And he's been involved again here early on. He's going to bounce inside the 10. Almost got away from Ambrose. He goes back to get it. At the 10, takes a hit at the 13. Wow. You can hear that all the way up here. That hit by Jonathan Evans. Let's go down to Elizabeth. Thanks, guys. Well, after those first two quick touchdowns, Cam Newton came over to the sideline, ripped his helmet off with a big smile on his face, doing jumping jacks, asking for a football in his hand to keep warmed up. After that third one, kept his helmet on, sat straight down. And I tell you what, Pew was shaking his head for that missed tackle. Cameron Newton is really becoming a leader of this team. Transfer from Blinn Junior College in Texas. Won a junior college national title last year. And these Tigers are rallying around him. He has a presence about himself, too, when he's around players. Frank Gooden to the outside. Can't get the corner. There's a penalty flag on the field. Mark Austin and this officiating crew have been busy here in the early going. It's a holding call against the Warhawks. And when you're 0-18 all-time against ranked opponents, and you know the cards are stacked against you, this stuff doesn't help. Holding. holding. Offense, Offense number seven. seven. Penalties, Penalties declined. declined. Second down. Second down. It's on Jairus Edwards, the backup tailback. I mean, here, if you go on the road, we talked about it before, there's a couple things that you cannot do. You can't commit foolish fouls and put your offense uh, in, in negative plays, and, and that's happened. They possessed the ball three times already, and, all, and in all those possessions, they've had fouls. Second down and 12 for ULM. Browning steps up, he'll run and slides down the 17-yard line. Browning has been the Warhawks' leading rusher the last two weeks. He ran for 83 yards against Arkansas State a couple of weeks ago, but even though he's got that ability, that's not what they'd like to do here, I don't think. Well, and, and what happened on that play, he held the ball a little longer than he has in the previous uh, possessions. He only gets the ball out of his hand. This time he was looking downfield, the rush got to him. to Edwards. Stiff arm, and it looks like he's going to be short of the first down. Let's go to the studio and an update. All right, thank you, Dari. Let's look at the standings in the east. Big one tonight for Florida. Taking on Alabama and Tuscaloosa. That's going to be a lot of fun tonight. Th that seems to be too soon, in, in my opinion. Florida against Alabama, that's soon. they got to make that game a little later, doesn't it? Well, don't they? it could happen again in the SEC yeah. title game in Atlanta. You're right. Monroe did pick up that first down, so first down and 10 for the Warhawks. Final 35 seconds here of the first quarter. Browning. Take it ahead to the 26, and there's no Igwe. The defensive end making his first tackle of the day. He had his first career start last week. And it might be the final play here of the first quarter. Boy, Auburn's offense certainly impressive. Uh, they've done a great job. Three possessions, three scores. They're probably a little disappointed on the last one you're having to kick a field goal. So Gene Chizik, who has learned a lot about his team after the month of September, now that the calendar has turned to October, hoping not to have a letdown against Louisiana Monroe. So far, so good. 17-3 after one here in Auburn. Auburn in the first quarter, 210 yards of total offense on just 11 plays. They lead it big here as we start the second quarter. 
Here's Jairus Edwards out of the backfield. He's going to be stopped short of the first down. Needed to get to the 33 and a half. Did not do it. I like the Warbirds attack. I'm mean, excuse me, the Warhawks attack. They continue to take the ball and get it out of the quarterback's hand quickly to get it out of to the perimeter so their wide receivers can make plays. Browning, as we said, beat out a fifth-year senior for the starting job. Todd Berry really likes his redshirt freshman quarterback. Third down and one from the 32. Dumps it off short, and it is going to be close to a first down. Now it is for sure as Centarius Donald. Great second effort, dives for the first down. Just his second reception of the season. Browning's completion picks up the first down. Warhawks are doing a good job of just making first downs. Watch the fullback here, he slips out. High throw, he adjusts to it, makes first catch. And you got to tackle that again. You, you have to get him on the ground. They don't, first down, Warhawks. Browning lobs it up to the near side, and Jerron Ham is well covered in the secondary. Now is Aaron Savage stride for stride. And one thing that Auburn has struggled with a little bit here is been giving up too many first downs to see. We're seeing ULM collect quite a few here today so far. They really are, but, but Auburn here too, they've been bit by the big plays, and right now they're, they're not giving up big plays, they're giving up little ones, and that's okay. Option pitch. That's Jerron Ham. Tackle made by Chris Davis. So we take a look at the time of possession. Really lopsided. You see ULM moving the football. It's deceiving because Auburn has been a quick strike offense here today. And they've been that way all year, Auburn. Quick striking offense. Third down and eight. Browning caught at the 40. Luther Ambrose with that speed up the sideline has enough for the first down. Gets into Auburn territory out at the 49. And that is the ninth first down picked up by Louisiana Monroe today. Browning had great poise in the pocket, stepped up, bought himself some time, and found Ambrose. The speedster got in the ball in space. There he goes. He can outrun you in space. Good, good job. Watched the motion. Brought him across the football field. Browning did a great job of stepping up in the pocket. Found him. Got it to him. And, it, and uh, we, make an, we make another first down. After the 14-yard pickup, Browning wants to throw. Feeling a little heat. Got rid of it in time. Complete to the 30-yard line. The number three wide out, number 18, Brent Leonard with the grab. This is all on the quarterback, Browning. Watch him here. He gets the safety out of position with the pump and finds this slot receiver right over the middle of the football field. Good call. Look at him there, standing in there. But the pump got the safety a little bit uh, off his mark, and he was able to fit it in there. 21-yard hookup. And Louisiana Monroe in Auburn territory for the third time today. Browning trips and goes down at the 34. Corey Lemonier, the backup left defensive end, got to him. The true freshman, who the coaches say is going to be real good here at Auburn. Watch him come off the edge here. Tackle did a bad job of, of a pass set. Opened his shoulders to the sideline, and when you allow that to happen, uh, you cannot protect the quarterback. Now second down and 15. Ball at the 33-yard line. Browning will keep it himself. And there's the speed of Lemonier again. That's one thing that really you notice throughout the SEC, the speed on defensive, on the defensive front. And you make and the reason for that, there, there's so many athletic quarterbacks that you have to have speed by your front, especially your defensive ends, because quarterbacks are generally always outside the pocket in this conference, making plays with their legs, and you have to have defensive ends that can run them down. Another 
long drive for ULM, trying to convert on third down. Flushed out, Browning across his body, completes it to the 22-yard line. And look at Nico Thorpe throwing his weight around. Luther Ambrose made the catch, but Thorpe made him pay. And it's short of the first down. You want to hear football? Listen to this hit. That hurts. That really hurts. Thorpe, very physical as you can see, maybe the most talented two in that secondary, just a little inconsistent yet. Boy, Auburn loves the way he isn't afraid to hit. A 41-yard field goal attempt here for Jabor. Already has one field goal made today. It's a fake. Cody Wells, the backup quarterback, throws it, and it's an intercepted. Zach Etheridge with the pick. Todd Berry trying a little trick play here in the first half and blows up on him. Some trickery. And really, when you look at the, we had a guy wide open in the middle, but the rush got to him and he, and he couldn't he couldn't plant to throw the football. He, he threw the football off his back leg and was a little bit short. Good fake here. They had a setup. They had a guy running down the field, but watch it. The rush got him. He was, he was leaning back, throwing the football, and that caused him to throw it short for an interception. Cody Wells picked off by Etheridge, who suffered a season-ending neck injury last year. Considers himself lucky to be even walking around. He has looked really good in the first four-plus games of this season for Auburn. Well, made a big play last week, too. Yep. Caused the hit and uh, really caused it toward the end of the game against uh, South Carolina. Made a big play down there in the end. So the Auburn defense. Keeps ULM from converting points on a 13-play drive. And they take over. Their own 34-yard line. Reverse. Here's Mario Fannin. To the 46-yard line. Took that little toss from McCaleb. It's a first down for the Tigers. Well, when you look at Auburn's uh, first three drives, the thing that's, that's, that, that strikes, strikes you on this page is two plays in the, in the first two drives and touchdowns. They're a high-powered offense that can score quickly. Coming back for the football, this is Zachary. It's going to be about a nine-yard pickup on that play. Zachary had the 78-yard touchdown reception in the Clemson game. Really good after the catch. Gus Malzahn, like we said before, he wants to get Zachary the football more. Dyer. Stays on his feet, and he has the first down. He had 100 yards last week against South Carolina. You can see why they are so high on the true freshman. Strong, really strong lower torso, and strong legs, good balance. Uh, Prelo makes a good tackle in space there. If he doesn't make that tackle, he's still running. Just over nine minutes to go here in the first half. 17-3 Auburn. Hand off to McCaleb. Boy, he tried to change field, and Ken Dorsey leveled him. A defensive end who's a captain on that ULM defense. What a hit here. And this is great pursuit by Dorsey. Got him to turn back, and Dorsey right there. Good play. Second and 12 after the loss of two on the play. Newton. Nice catch out at the 33-yard line by Darvin Adams. He just demands the football, says Gus Melzon. Good, good read by Newton also. And Coach Melzon, I mean, he understands they brought pressure that time. Had a man-to-man -man coverage route dialed up. Newton uh, reads it and gets Adams the ball for first down. Gain of 13 yards. On, Looking over to the sideline and those cards, that flip chart that Melzahn has. It's got colors on it, numbers, all kinds of symbols. Cam Newton knows exactly what they mean. It means pass on this play and it's complete. It's Adams. They'll move the sticks again. 
Out at the 19-yard line, first down Auburn. And, and Newton likes Adams. He, he, he likes getting him the football. He trusts him the most out of all the receivers right now. After the gain of 13, they go back to the ground game and Dyer. And he stopped at the 15. Now the offense under Gus Malzahn is innovative in a lot of ways. One thing certainly that stands out though is the way they get the plays in. It's very detailed, very organized how they orchestrate this. They did this yesterday in the walkthrough watching this thing. I got dizzy looking at those numbers and the colors. Here's Mario Fannin, breaks a tackle. Cuts back inside the five and spins down to the three-yard line. Otis Peterson, the cornerback, kept him out of the end zone. They like Fannin in the fact that when he, you know, when he gets outside the numbers, he can make people miss. Watch him here. Good, look at him. Look at him run here. Good balance. Can make people miss in space. He just has to hold on to the football. Dyer, touchdown. One of the strengths of this Auburn team is their depth at tailback, and we saw all three on that series. Fannin, McCaleb, and then Dyer. They have three weapons in the backfield. They use them differently. Uh, Dyer, obviously, is the inside runner. I like the way they, they finished this drive off. They ran the ball in the end zone. They, they put it on their offensive line and said, we're going to run it inside and score. Here comes Byram on for his third extra point of the day. Fourth-year kicker here at Auburn, senior from Fort Lauderdale. And it's 24-3 as the number 10 team in the country. Big favorites coming into the day, hoping that they wouldn't have a letdown against Louisiana Monroe. Well, that hasn't been the case so far. Big lead with 6.53 to go in the half. Mm -hmm. Get these guys going downhill and hard to stop. You can kind of see that crown there in that shot. It's more pronounced when you're down there standing on it. Seems like you're, you're, you're looking uphill when you stand outside the numbers. Louisiana Monroe going to get the football back. They're down big. Ambrose takes a pop at the 23-yard line. Let's get an update with Dari Noka in the studio. All right, Dari, thank you very much. Well, Robbie Caldwell got his uh, first win a couple of weeks ago at Ole Miss. They were idle last week. Joker Phillips had a tough one last week in Gainesville, Florida, but I think Joker is going to do great things in Lexington, Kentucky. A little play fake here. Colton Browning feeling some pressure. Penalty flag. Pass incomplete. Tended for Tavares May, and it's going to be holding here on the Warhawks. Yeah, it really, this, this, they start. They're starting this drive off like they did last drive. Foul on the first play, on the first possession. Holding, holding. Offense, 82. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's on Kevin Steed, the tight end. We revisit the game trends, and not much has changed since the last time we, we talked about this. Auburn scoring on the, every single possession, scoring fairly quickly. ULM is, has controlled the play as far as time of possession. But the object is the what? Score points. And Auburn has done that. Browning, nowhere to go. D. Ford, the backup left defensive end, wraps him up. He's number 95. Uh, talking with Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator for Auburn, he says, boy, this defensive line has a chance to be really good. We like our starters, and we love the fact that we have depth at all four positions. They really do, and, and what they have to do is improve in the back end of their defense, uh, their secondary play. Empty backfield again. Browning on second and forever. Wow. Just a tidal wave led by Nick Farley, number 90. Farley, the uh, junior who the coaches say is still learning, but it looks like he's got it figured out pretty good. Watch Farley here. Great hands. 
pull and tuck and rip through. And this is what happens when you make the quarterback hold the ball. It's hard to block the Auburn defensive lineman. If you hold that ball for too long, bad things happen to you. His fifth sack of the year. Now third and 27, and there's movement on the left side. Looked like the left tackle, Ryan McCall. Dead ball, false start. 72 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still third down. It is on McCall. His third position on this offensive line in the last three weeks. It's one thing that has been unsettling for Todd Berry. Hasn't had any consistency up front. That's tough. And also, you know, long, third long. I mean, this is impossible. You just got to get out of here without turning the ball over. If you're the Warhawk. Shovel pass. Gooden. And he'll get a few yards back. Give his punter some room as he's out at the 15-yard line. That was really a, one of the worst possessions for the Warhawks uh, in this game. You know, they, they went backwards the, the, the whole time. And, you know, and Coach has to be a little bit disappointed in that. Uh, Coach Todd Berry, and uh, now you got a punt. Aaron Munoz comes on to kick. Munoz recruited as a quarterback, but the team lost its starter to academic reasons. He is punting for the first time since he was an eighth grader on a regular basis. Quindarius Carr will give Auburn good field position at the 49. This is college football. You, we need to be fired up. Saturday, wonderful afternoon. You're watching college football. What could be better than this? Cam Newton hands off to Dyer. Dyer scoring that touchdown on Auburn's last possession. And Cam Newton, number one in the SEC in rushing, coming into the day. 121 yards per game. Hasn't carried the football yet, and that is by design. That, that's Coach Chiswick's plan. He doesn't want Cam to have to carry the ball 15, 20 times a game. He, he understands he has to keep this guy healthy if they're going to have any type of chance to win the SEC. On second down and five, rolling out. Wants to throw. We'll see if he has to run. Does not. Complete. Got at the 28-yard line by Zachary. First down, Auburn. Newton had been carrying a heavy load through those first four games, 75 carries. I mean, that's similar to the load he was carrying when he was at Blinn Junior College. That's not going to happen in the SEC. I mean, he'll take a pounding week to week. Well, I think Cam Newton also understands that he has, he has a great talent surrounding him. All he needs to do is orchestrate the offense. Completed that pass for 16 yards. Go under center this time, and he'll pitch it out. Here's Ontario. McCaleb. And he's got a first down out at the 17 yard line. There is the speed back again. Ontario McCaleb. Alex Ebay, the Hawk safety, ran him out. That's what they like. They like to get their speed outside. They know if they can get it outside the numbers, they can make big plays. McCaleb, very lean, only 171 pounds. He's 5'10. Looks like a receiver out there, but boy, when he gets going, he can move. A pump for Newton. Now lobs it up. Has a man. Caught. Did he stay in? Yes. Touchdown, Quindarius Carr. What an athletic play for Carr, and Auburn scores again. Well, if Cam Newton is not a Heisman candidate, I think after today he will be. I mean, he's playing tremendous football, and you know, he does a great job of pumping the safety. They, they run a double move over there, an out and up. Good throw. Watch this throw. Good job by Carr to get this foot down for the touchdown. Junior out of Huntsville, Alabama, Quindarius Carr. Byron with the extra point, and it's 31-3. Cameron Newton, huge day again. We're only through a half, not even. Cody Parkey is going to kick off here for Auburn. Big hit at the 20. Etheridge down there, number four, to make that tackle. 
The defensive line today for Auburn coach has been impressive. Just a lot of pressure coming from the edge, coming from inside. They're big, they're athletic, and they're mean. And it's hard to protect the quarterback when he has to hold on to the ball. And in this conference, you have to have athletic defensive ends for that reason. When the quarterback gets outside, your ends have to chase him down. And they have two big-time ends that can do that. Browning throws on first down. It's caught by Ambrose out at the 23-yard line. Team Bell is getting some play here now in the first half. Usually the nickel and dime back, but I think the, the coaching staff for Auburn would like to start resting some guys. If Certainly in the second half, if the game stays in their favor by a big margin. There's a first down as Tavares May makes the catch. Out to the 39-yard line. This is a big series for the Warbirds offense. They need to stay on the football field and put some points on the board. Really, so Auburn's offense cannot possess the ball before the half. Two minutes to play. Browning throws it out to the flat. It's dropped in and out of the hands of Jairus Edwards. And I keep calling these guys the Warbirds. They're the Warhawks. They are the Warhawks. That hawk scared yes. me when he was flying around the stadium. Well, that's an eagle. That's the war eagle. <laughs> the and, that, eagle and, that, and that's what they're all kind of birds about. around here. <laughs> they're the war hawks. And they are I apologize. a proud program. They've For got to hold on to the ball here. They have to protect their defense right now. On second and ten, Browning got rid of it. Hit as he threw. Penalty flag down. Caught at the 41 yard line by Brent Leonard. And he was wrapped up by El Toro Freeman. We'll see what the penalty flag's about. And another holding call against ULM. Holding. 56 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. It's Jonathan Gill, the guard. It's hard enough going on the road and playing on the road against a good football team. You're talking about playing the 11th ranked team in the country. And, and what you cannot do is allow yourself to beat yourself with fouls. And then that's just, you know, quarterback has to hold on to the ball. And they can't protect the quarterback. And you want to hold, try to protect the quarterback, but it doesn't do you any good to put yourself in bad field position offensively. T. Bell, number 22. Great coverage. Come on, Kept Tavares May from hauling that one in. Louisiana Monroe, eight penalties here in the first half. Yeah, and, and what's going to hurt them now, if they don't convert this third down, they're going to have to punt it back to Auburn with time, time left yeah. on the clock. Four of eight today on third downs. Browning feeling the heat from the edge, got rid of it and almost intercepted. Jessel Curry almost picked it off. Michael Goggins, number 49, he almost had Browning down in the backfield. Watch the two defenses ends here. They know he has to hold on to the ball because it's third and long. And when that happens, it's tough to block Auburn's defensive line. So Munoz comes out to punt Quindarius Carr. He's going to get this ball back for Auburn, the rugby style. Carr from the 40 gets a block. And he's down at the 46. A minute and 18 seconds to go here in the first half. Auburn trying to tack onto their lead. How about the Heisman Trophy? He has led Auburn to 325 yards of total offense. A little misdirection coming to the near side at Zachary. Into the secondary and into ULM territory. Still on his feet inside the 20. And finally spun out of bounds by Isaiah Newsom. What a run for Terrell Zachary. But there is a penalty marker down. And it's going to come back. Thirty-four Block yard play wiped out. Offense 66. Ten yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Still first down. It's left guard Mike Berry. A graduate student. Already has his degree in public administration, but Officials may have misidentified him. 
It appears it was Lee Zimba instead, number 73. That didn't look like a hole to me. Just looked like a good little push on the shoulder pad, but I'm not down there on the first field. Down so now first down and three for Auburn. Tight end, Lutzenkirk, and goes in motion. Pump fake by Newton. Now he's under pressure. Chased and down. Down at the 41 yard line. Jordan Landry yeah, Newton brought down by with the sack. Four. Jordan Landry. And, and this is where Newton has to understand at that point, uh, out, when the receiver's not First open, he's got to throw the ball away. You can't take a sack here. And now Auburn wants a timeout after a loss of 11 on the play. Let's go down to Elizabeth. When Cam came out of that last timeout, he went over to Melzon and said, "I even though we scored, I still need to work on my feet. I've got to be quicker. I have got to be faster, working on the little things, as we know he's trying to improve on. Goes to what you were talking about earlier, Elizabeth. I mean, the guy had no preconceived notions about what he was going to be here at Auburn. He feels like Auburn he's starting from scratch. He has a lot so to prove, and he's working hard every day. Well, that's his work ethic. He came in here with one thing in mind, to improve as a quarterback. He wants to be known as a quarterback, not an athlete playing quarterback. And you're right. He has to improve on his, his, his delivery and his footwork when he throws the football. Passing has dominated his game today. He has yet to carry. He passes to Fannin out of the backfield. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and then some. Still short of the first down, but down at the 46-yard line of Louisiana Monroe. And now another timeout called for by the Tigers. And Fannin is the, the all-purpose back. He can run it. He can catch the ball coming out of the backfield. They like him in two-minute situations. They like him on third down. Excellent athlete in space. Here are the numbers on Cam Newton. 10 of 12 passing, 219 for a first down every time. That, that one stat really stands out at you. First, <laughs> that's really good. That's what quarterbacks want to be judged on. When they get the ball in their hand, can they score touchdowns? We're going to pick up the first down here. Third down and two. 48 seconds to go in the half. Plenty of time to throw for Newton, but he overshot his receiver. That time it was Emory Blake. And Auburn. Let's see if they bring out the punting unit or if they decide to just go for it here on fourth down. They have to go for it here, in my opinion. They're in a two-minute situation. Um, use this to your advantage. You don't. You, this is this is good work for the quarterback Cam Newton. And two for two on fourth down conversion attempts this year. He might be lining up the punt. <laughs> yeah. Yep, Newton's going to pooch punt it. Well, this is a look we haven't seen from the star quarterback. Well, he really can do it all. Darvin Adams, good job getting down there to cover the play. And ULM will have it at the 23-yard line with 36 seconds to go. And that's another category we have to add to Cam Newton's stats. Let me get this right. He, he plays quarterback. He can run. He can pass. Now he can punt. Didn't they used to have a thing like that when you were a little kid, the punt, pass, and kick? Yeah. Well, he's, he, he maybe can win that contest. I wasn't very good at it. Neither was I. He's oh, yeah, good. I believe that for a second. <laughs> Tell you what, Lou Holtz is a big fan. We were watching the coach last night the hotel. And, and you know, Lou Holtz doesn't think that you should be overlooking Cam Newton for the Heisman right You're now. You're exactly right, and I agree with Coach Holtz. He makes some great points about Cam Newton. First down, Browning fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and that was probably a bad idea. He is punished as Kenneth Carter, the backup D tackle. Greenville, Alabama makes the hip. And when you talk about Cam Newton, going into this football game, uh, Auburn felt like and Coach Chiswick felt that he needed to come out and really establish Cam Newton as a throwing quarterback and not try to run the football so much. He's done that thus far in the first half of this football game. He was definitely worried about the workload that Newton was getting. What will be interesting here in the second half is how long do they let Cameron Newton play in this football game? Jairus Edwards from two yards deep in the end zone will bring it out as ULM will start with the football. There's a flag down at the 20-yard line. Edwards gets out to the 26. 
be interesting to see how many of the star players, both sides of the ball for Auburn, stay in there. A lot of penalties in the first half against ULM. Penalty flag here on the first play of the second half. We'll see if it's against the Warhawks. And the penalties really have and hurt them offensively, putting them in bad field position and, and really taking them out of drive. There's two fouls on the return. Holding. That penalty's declined. Illegal block in the back, number 48. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First out. Todd Berry just shaking his head. They're both. Colton Browning threw for 150 yards in that first half. Out of the gun. We'll hand off here on first down to Frank Gooden. And he is going to be hog tight and thrown down hard by the nose tackle, Zach Clayton. The local product out of Opelika, Alabama, blue collar guy, and he's throwing his weight around here. And when you look at Auburn, of Gooden. yeah, when you look at Auburn, tough to run the ball. Warhawks only had. They had minus 15 yards rushing for the most part in the first half. Lines are two on the play, second down at 12. From the end zone, Browning to the outside. It is caught at the 20. Nice catch by Tavares May. That's a first down. I really like Browning, the quarterback. I, I think he is a, he's a terrific player, boy. He, he has a great sense of, of, of protections. He has a great sense of uh, coverages when he looks downfield, and, he, and he, he has really good accuracy when he throws the football. Game of 16. First down, Browning. Rolling to his right again, comes back across his body, and it's Kevin Steed. Who see their 0-18 all-time against ranked teams. He's got a young bunch, 25 seniors gone from last year's team. A lot of times they're working through things right out on the field. Luther Ambrose runs it around the right side for a short game. Now, you've been a coach. When you've got youngsters, it's got to be frustrating at times. It's experience, and they lack experience right now. Uh, but here again, the quarterback, I, I think Browning is doing a great job. Ambrose is competing well. So they've, they've got some things to build on. This is a good test for them the second half to see how, see how they move the ball offensively. This is their second game against an SEC opponent. They'll also play LSU later in the year. Coming to this game, one and two. Big deficit here as we start the second half. Complete to Gooden. Out at the 26-yard line, immediately wrapped up, and it's going to bring up third down. Excuse me, fourth down as ULM will uh, walk out the punting unit. To Sharp and Bell in on the coverage there. Anthony Munoz will kick it away. Quindarius Carr standing back at his 35-yard line. This is returnable for Carr. Bobbles it at the 40, hangs in there with it. And dives across midfield to the 48-yard line of Louisiana Monroe. And that's one of the things that Auburn had a lot of in the first half. Good field position. They got it again here to start. Good field position. And here again now, uh, the Warhawks are defensively now. They need to take a stand here and grow up a little bit defensively. They need to prevent Auburn from going down and, and scoring a touchdown on this series. Newton, 11 for 14, throwing the football, hands off to Mario Fannin. And he steps out of bounds. They're going to say at the 23. Good run for Fannin. 25 yards on that pickup. Isaiah Newsom escorted him out. See, and what hurts you here, you're so concerned about Auburn running inside. Uh, now Auburn has done a great job of really running outside, and when they do that, uh, they're attacking the weakness of the Warhawks' defense outside on the perimeter. Fannin now three carries for 49 yards. You see the rushing yards, 137 as a team as Fannin carries again. Stopped at the 21. The running backs have been able to carry the load running the football today. Cam Newton has not been called on one time in that category. 
Cam Newton has done a great job of orchestrating the offense and really being patient when he go back when he goes back to throw the football. He's not nervous. He doesn't want to take off and run. He's orchestrating the offense, getting it to the players and letting them make plays. This is McCaleb. And ULM was all over that. That's going to be a loss on the play. Robert Nelson, the right corner. Who's considered the Warhawks' best cover guy. Read that run, a little misdirection play. And that's a good job defensively uh, of not letting them attack your perimeter and make big plays. So it's a loss of four. Brings up third down and long. And Auburn will... Check again with that sideline. And Gus Malzahn's play call. Newton wants to throw. For the end zone, it is intercepted. Picked off by Otis Peterson. Fourth interception thrown this year by Newton. Otis Peterson making his second career start. Nate Brown out with an injury, and he comes up with a big play. Zobbert has turned away on their first series of the second half. <laughs> Colton Browning out of the gun from the end zone. As they take over after the interception. Dumped off underneath, and it is caught by May. He's quietly having a nice day. He has dropped out at the eight-yard line. That's his fifth catch today. Nice poise in the pocket by Browning. He just stood in the pocket in the end zone, didn't panic. <laughs> Read the coverage, got it to his receiver. He could catch it and run with it for a while. Cam Newton throwing an interception. And in front of the end zone, now ULM trying to put something together. It is snagged out of the air by Brent Leonard. Nice catch. And it'll be a first down. Darren Bates, the strong side linebacker, made the tackle. Colton Browning. In that first half was 18 of 26 through the interception, 150 yards passing. You can see he has a nice release. A nice release and puts it in position where the receiver can catch the ball. That's what I like about it. he plays it. Browning this time, feeling the heat, steps out of pressure. He tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, can't do it. He's dropped for a loss. Jake Holland got to him for the sack. Third string middle linebacker who doesn't see a ton of time. That's because Josh Bynes patrols the middle. But great pressure here by Auburn. Good line, defensive line play here. Too much pressure. Brown just has to take it and go down with it. All into freshman out of Pelham, Alabama. So now second down and 13 for ULM. Handoff. Luther Ambrose, the speedster. Now, for him to showcase his speed, He's got to have space, and Auburn hasn't really let him do that today. No, and Auburn, you know, they're, they're very fast and athletic, and, and that's what helps you when you try to turn the corner on these guys. They're, they're, they're fast enough to catch you in open space, and what Auburn does defensively is create negative plays. Uh, prior to this play, uh, they caused a negative play, and now they put the Warhawks in third in a long situation. Third down and nine. Warhawks four for ten on third down conversions today. A little play fake. Passes to Tavares May again. Ball comes loose, and it looks like the Tigers have it. Yes, they do. Recovered at the 21-yard line. Michael Goggins knocked it out. And Jake Holland, number five, recovered it. Watch our end here now. Does a great job of getting upfield and now hustling to the play. Good job of hitting and really falling on the football and creating a turnover defensively. Now here's Mario Fannin. <laughs> And he's stacked up at the 17. Pickup of two for Fannin. Alex Ebay makes the stop. That's the second turnover today for Louisiana Monroe. You couple that with the penalties they have taken, the mistakes they've had. And on the road against a team like Auburn, and understand why the score is the way it is. Auburn's good enough without giving them a second chance. You can't do that. 
if you're going to win a game on the road like this. But Caleb in the backfield to the left of Newton. Pump. Newton to the end zone. Man incomplete. Cody Burns had it on his hands, couldn't haul it in. Were three Warhawks in coverage. Good eyes there by Burns. Turned around and found the ball and, and made a play on right here. Good pump fake here, but Burns, you know, kept, stayed in his coverage, did a great job of extending his hand and knocking the ball out. Auburn today, you can see they have not converted on third down yet. 0 for 3. But they haven't had to. No, they've scored on first or second down a lot. <laughs> third down and 6. Here's Newton. Throws on the run. Hooks up with Terrell Zachary again. It's enough for a first down. First down and goal now for the Tigers. On that play there, Cameron Newton showed a little bit of, of maturity there. And he had a wide open sideline, and he sat there and waited until the receiver came open and threw him the football. He, he, he could have ran that, but he, he did a good job of showing patience and throwing the football out. Tigers three for four in the red zone, spinning his way inside the five is Michael Dyer. Dyer a little sore this week after that big second half against South Carolina last week here at Jordan-Harris Stadium. Well, that's what's going to happen, though. A true freshman adjusting to play in the SEC. It's a long season for young, for young players, whether it's in college football or pro football. Play fake. There's Lexington Kirk in the tight end. Nice snag. No gain on the play. Good coverage there by the linebacker, Alex Ebay. Hudson Kirkin. Versatile player. Line up in the backfield and he'll block for you, but you can see he can catch the football. Well, talking to Coach Chiswick about, uh, about him, he said he, he had great hands, and he does. He has great hands of concentration, knows how to get open. Sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. Third down and goal. Newton taking a look to the right, comes back left. It's Letson Kirkin on the screen. Touchdown! <laughs> Auburn taking advantage of the ULM turnover, and they turn it into points. Well-designed play. Roll to the right. Throw it back to the left to the screen. Good job by the offensive lineman getting out in front and, and, and picking up two nice blocks. Byram on for the extra point. 38-3, Tigers. Cameron Newton, his third touchdown pass today. He has got 12 on the season. And nobody's talking about him for the Heisman. Come on. There's Mario Fannin, he threw a nice block on that last play. Lutzen Kirkin on the reception to make it 38-3. Six plays, 20 yards after the turnover. Took just two minutes and 22 seconds to get it in the end zone. Let's take a look at the last play again, Coach. Yeah, you watch it here. Great job of blocking by Fannin, really setting up the play. Well designed. Rolling a little bit to the right, takes the, takes the, makes a nice block and throws it back across field to Lutzen Kirk. And guess what? The linemen do a great job of blocking. Fannin, the number one tailback coming into the season, dislocated his shoulder three weeks ago and then had a fumble last week. Never saw the field again after that opening series. So happy to be contributing here today. And what is a big lead for the Tigers, 38-3, with 6.09 to go in the third quarter. Cody Parkey is on to kick off again. That last time that Auburn was on the field defensively, not a single starter out there. And it's a good bet Gene Chizik is going to start to rest his star players. I would think so, and you need to. Long season got a, a big lead and now it's, it's time to let some of the young players play and ULM will start this series from the 35 yard line there's Josh Bynes the starting middle linebacker and you can see his helmet is off we talked to him at length yesterday just a treat what a nice guy and 
excellent player. And, and, and work is not done for, for the veteran guys. In other words, the seniors and the juniors that are starters. They have to put their coach's hat on now, look on the field, and help these young players. Bynes leads the team in tackles. Hardly leaves the field, but today Ted Roof was looking for an opportunity to get him some snaps off. And this is the perfect opportunity. That's complete to Anthony McCall. He's out of bounds near midfield. There's Ted Roof. And defense. See, they have been up at Colton Browning's grill all day. Ted Roof is a nice guy for Gene Chiswick to have around, too. He's a former head coach. He's been in Gene's shoes. And, and Gene said in the meeting that he really lets Coach Roof really run the defense. He doesn't worry about it. He knows, he, he knows how to do it, and he's going to leave him alone. And I think the defense has done a great job of not allowing big plays. Yeah, that's kind of been their Achilles heel the last couple of weeks, allowing big plays defensively. After a four-yard pickup, it's going to bring up second down and six. And, you know, you've got to have some thick skin when you're Gene Chiswick to have a former head coach on your staff. Well, not only that, but, but I think you hire people to help you. And, and, and good head coaches hire good people that will help them get through the season. You've got to trust the people you hire. Pass is complete. On the near side to Zarell Sanders. Be about a yard short of the first down. Third and one coming up for ULM. Ted Roof, who said before he came to Auburn, he was at Minnesota. And he has been given a lot to work with. Talked about Josh Bynes, the senior leader of this defense. He had that big interception of the South Carolina win last week. Nick Fairley, big guy up front, a junior leader. And I think the key to any defense basically is simplifying things. And he's done that. Ball loose again, and Auburn says they've come up with it one more time. And yes, they have. Akeem Means stripped it. And it's Kenneth Carter coming up with the fumble recovery. And there is Bynes, the first guy on the sideline to get out there and congratulate folks. Players coach. Third turnover today for ULM. Sacked once. Didn't have to run the football. Did not run the football today. Did a great job of orchestrating the offense and getting it to his weapons to make plays. Number 14, Barrett Trotter. Barrett Trotter is in the game now at quarterback for Auburn as Cam Newton will take the rest of the day off. Now here's our Facebook question. Log on. And we want to know what you think. Who is the best quarterback in college football right now? I have a feeling how this is going to go, at least from the people who are watching this game today. Yeah, exactly right. I agree with you. A lot of good quarterbacks out there this year that have a chance uh, to maybe win uh, uh, the Heisman Trophy. Good to see that Terrell Pryor, even though he was dinged up on a play earlier today, came back for Ohio State. Here's Trotter on his first pass attempt of the day. It's complete, but it's going to be a loss. Sean Kitchens, backup halfback, makes that reception. Good job Loss there of, of the Warbirds uh, tackling in space. Oh, excuse Warhawks. Right, here I go again, the Warhawks. <laughs> Doggone it. Barrett Trotter. Just his second career game. Had a little playing time in the season opener against Arkansas State. Completed his only pass attempt for 13 yards. That was a loss of three on that play. Second down and 13. Out of the gun, a little play fake. Has time to throw. Cox's arm fires over the middle and incomplete. Nearly intercepted. Alex Ebay almost got his hand on it to pick it off. Derek Winter, the intended receiver. Now, if you're Cam Newton, are you watching intently trying to help this young man? That's what you're supposed to do. You're the starting player right now. You should be, your eye should be on the football field helping these young guys. No matter what position they play, your eye should be on the field. And when they come off the field, now you have a chance to coach. And that's important. Coach the young guys. Cameron Newton left Florida because he didn't want to stand on the sidelines. That's when Tim Tebow was running the show with the Gators. An inside handoff to Mario Fannin. And he 
He's going to get inside the 40-yard line. A few yards short of the first down. He left Florida because he knew he was going to be behind Tebow until Tebow decided to leave for the NFL early or graduated, and he just decided, I'm going to leave. He went to Blinn Junior College for a year, tore it up, won a junior college national championship, then had to decide where he was going to go back to play Division I. It was between Mississippi State and Auburn, and he decided to go with Gene Chizik. Probably more importantly, Gus Malzahn in this Auburn offense. Well, he fits this offense beautifully in the fact that he can run it, he can throw it. Uh, he's guiding a team right now that has the ability to be 5-0. and uh, and, and Good for him. He had to make a decision. Yeah. He's a great enough, good enough athlete that he understands, I want to play football. He goes to a program that fits the type of style and athletic ability that he has. He can run it, he can throw it. He's done a great job today of really orchestrating the passing game. Derek Winter on that catch. So first down and 10 for Auburn at the 25-yard line. Barrett Trotter has controls of this offense now. Cam Newton, his day is done most likely. Looking on from the sidelines. Trotter hands off. Fanner sneaks into the secondary and down at the 15-yard line as we go back to Elizabeth. As you're talking about Cam Newton in junior college, and he told us yesterday he saw a lot of things he had never seen before in his life, that it was a completely different lifestyle for him, but he looked at it as a business, that he could either drown here or he could do something about it. He said, I'm not a prophet or a preacher, but I see so many things in other people. That's what I'm trying to do. That's why I decided to come to Auburn. It was a tough decision for him because uh, Dan Mullen, the head coach at Mississippi State, had really fostered a relationship with Cameron Newton. And Newton said it was the toughest decision he ever had to make. But the best thing about the decision, he called coach up and told him exactly why he was coming to Auburn. And, and that's being a man. Face, face up to the guy that's really been recruiting for a long time, feeling that you might want to really go there. But he changes his mind and, and he comes to Auburn and uh, playing real well. And then, of course, went head-to-head -head against Dan Mullen's team in Starkville a few weeks ago and helped Auburn come out of there with a road win. And it had to be heartbreaking for Mullen, thinking what could have been. Hand off to Fannin, straight ahead. Bulls his way inside the five down to the two-yard line. Been real impressed with the rotation in the Auburn backfield today, Coach. Dyer, Fannin, McCaleb getting it done in their own individual way, but nonetheless getting it done. And it really starts with their offensive line. Uh, they've had one of the best offensive lines in the SEC. They're doing a great job of really coming off the ball and really covering up their defensive linemen of, of the Warhawks and, and, and pushing them out and letting the running backs have great vision when they get the ball so they can make moves inside and, and, and make big plays. Cam Newton calls that front five the big nasties. Four seniors up there, they're very good. And through three quarters, Auburn has been impressive. 38-3 here at home. Most of the time they run the ball, they, they have the quarterback extending the fake to the running back. Either he gives it to him, he pulls it out, and they decide to drop back and throw. And they've done that a lot today. And Louisiana Monroe will start at the 27-yard line as we take a look at Gusman. A very good teacher. Of, of the details of what needs to be done to have success. New quarterback in there for Monroe. It's Cody Wells, and it's complete out to the 32-yard line. Let's go down to Elizabeth. You're talking about how meticulous Coach Malzahn is. Well, Newton told us yesterday he is a repetition freak. He walks us through this offense and film like we were in kindergarten. Coach Chizik told us how attentive he is to details, the six steps, obviously working with Cam Newton on the sidelines, working on his footwork still. The attention to detail is just amazing. He has to be that way, Coach, because it is a little bit complicated at times. Well, if you're going to have any type of success, the one thing you do know, your habits create who you are. And if you create good work habits, and if you're detailed, you have a chance to be successful. Centarius Donald fights several tackles off to get the first down as you take a look at the total yards today. 444 yards. And five times since he's become the offensive coordinator, They've gone over 500 yards per game, and there's still a lot of time left. Well, lots of yards, but, but more than the yards, First their ability to make big plays in this offense. That's what scares, when, scares you when you play all run. Brown.
Browning's out of the game. This is Cody Wells, at quarterback, gets hit. Got it out of his hand and complete somehow to Luke Russell. It was an end-over-end -end ball in the middle, uh, in midair, and Russell comes up with it. I think this is a good decision, too, by uh, our Coach Barry, uh, really to put the, the other quarterback in the game right now. Because the one thing you do know right now about the, about the Warhawks, I like their quarterback, Browning. They've got something to build on uh, with him playing quarterback. Second and three here for Wells. Started a couple of games last year when Rebel was hurt. He'll hand off here, and it's going to be a first down for Donald. Wells won the number two job for Louisiana Monroe. Colton Browning got the starting nod this season, and Trey Rebel, who was fifth-year senior this year, out of the picture. In fact, he uh, asked the coaching staff, well, if I'm not going to be the starter, I'm not going to be the number two guy, move me to another position. He's now a tight end. The players want to play football. And sometimes when, when you get to the next level of leaving high school and go to college, th there might be a couple players better than you. You, you have to decide. Look, i got to push my ego to the side because I really want to play football. Wherever, whatever you want me to do, coach, I'm willing to do. Just get me on the field. Wells, handoff, and what a shot. Corey Lemonier coming in there hot, and Centarius Donald goes down hard. One of the star freshmen up front defensively for Auburn. This defense is built to cause negative plays, to get you in second and third and long. That was Auburn's 10th tackle for loss today. As Donald gets a couple yards back, Freeman on the stop this time. This is the eighth meeting with Auburn for Louisiana Monroe. And Auburn well on its way to winning for the eighth time. The last two are shutouts. And ULM still has a lot of time on the clock. They'd like to make something positive happen here in the fourth quarter so they can leave with a good taste in them. Well, Coach Todd Berry, really, he's evaluating this football team right now. And, and some of these young players. Browning, or excuse me, Wells throws incomplete. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And, and, and Coach Todd Berry, really, he's in a rebuilding mode right now with his football team. He's finding out a lot about his players right now. Do they fit what he wants to do offensively and defensively? Munoz on to punt from the 40. Lost it. Ball loose. Munoz can't recover. It looks like Auburn did. They'll unstack him. Auburn's football. Chris Humphreys on the recovery, number 40 for the Tigers. Great field position again as Todd Berry just scratches his head. And, and what has hurt the Warhawks? Penalties and turnovers. Fourth turnover today for Louisiana Monroe. Auburn with 11.04 to go. They just recovered a fumble. ULM was back to punt. Munoz couldn't handle the snap, and Auburn jumped on it. They've got it at the 41-yard line. Backup quarterback is in. Cam Newton is out after a beautiful day. Barrett Trotter hands off. And we're going to see several reserves in there now for Auburn. Davis Hooper, number 45 on that carry. There's Cameron Newton. 14 for 19 passing. 245 yards, three touchdowns, did not run once, no carries today. That was Coach Chiswick's plan. He wanted Cam Newton to sit in the pocket and throw the football. Trotter to the outside, it's complete. The uh, tailgating here in Auburn, Alabama. No humidity today. It's just very pleasant. Nice football day. Nice weather. Uh, good football game in the start. Now it's kind of gotten away from everybody. But uh, if you're Auburn, you have to be very impressed.
how you have played offensively as well as defensively today. Inside the 20-yard line, the clock continues to run, 940 and counting. It's Hooper again. Gene Chizik, 12 and 5 at Auburn coming into the day. Last year racked up eight wins, becoming the first first-year head coach at Auburn to go to a bowl game. He's trying to match last year's 5-0 and start. It looks like that's going to happen for sure. And then this year, however, he wants to finish strong. The team kind of faded down the stretch last year. Lost some games down the stretch, and a lot of that has to do with focus, concentration. And I think this team right now is on a mission to really to prove to, to a lot of people that uh, they're a team that's in the SEC that has a chance. The games at home, Arkansas, and then LSU back-to-back. -back. SEC has tough football, tough schedules. But if you make it through, it, it, it says one thing, you're a good football team. Trotter. All kinds of time. Now he's going to run to the end zone. Touchdown. Barrett Trotter. The pride of Briarwood Christian High School in Birmingham with his first career touchdown. And he's going to hold on to that football. Nobody's taking that one away from him. We talked about Cam Newton's dive. Watch his dive. Here. He gets around in. Everyone's covered. He has some athleticism here. He tucks it, and now he's going to run. Now, he jumped from about the 2. Cam Newton jumped from about the 10. <laughs> <laughs> Big day for Barrett Trotter. Getting some playing time here in the fourth quarter, his first career touchdown. And it's now 52 to 3. What were your impressions of Trey Burton after last week? Six touchdowns for Florida. He's a, they, they, Florida always finds a guy like that. It's, it's amazing. The guy's a tremendous athlete. It'll be fun to watch him tonight and how Alabama tries to defend him. Between those two teams, Alabama and Florida, they have won 52 straight SEC regular season games. That streak obviously going to come to an end tonight because you don't count the SEC title game as a regular season game. And I said before, this might be the first of two meetings this season between Florida and Alabama. And both teams understand their identity, how they play football. Uh, the bottom line, I think, in this game tonight would be how the defenses play and, and, and how they react to adjusting as the game is being played. Cody Wells rolling out to his right for ULM. Has a receiver wide open at the 43-yard line. It's snared by Zarell Sanders. So first down. For the Warhawks, it's a gain of 12 yards. So what do you like in that game tonight? I like Alabama's physicalness. It starts with their offensive line, their running game. Uh, I like Florida's speed outside the numbers. That'll be the chess game that both teams play. Going to pick a winner? I'll go with Alabama. I'm going to take Florida. How about that? Centarius Donald for like three Alabama. yards on the run. I like, they've been there before. They've played in a lot of big games. I'm not saying Florida hasn't, but when it all boils down, I like Alabama's quarterback. He never loses football games. He always finds a way to win. Is that a true statement? Absolutely. McElroy, as good as they come. And Florida, I still think, is working out some things offensively. Yesterday was a was a small breakthrough, but I, I still think Urban Meyer not completely satisfied with, with that offense. With that said, I, I'm picking up set. Wells gets out of trouble, but nobody home on that far sideline. Incomplete. McElroy undefeated as a starter, 18-0. You're right. The floor, the, what all, when you look back at Florida, it's, they seem to always have great skill players. And, and, and Coach Myers knows, he knows how to get them the football in space. And that's where Florida scares them. A game coming up tonight. We've got a big game coming up this afternoon on ESPNU. Michigan and Indiana. Both teams undefeated. Denard Robinson, everybody's favorite right now. 
in the Heisman race. The quarterback for Michigan. Wells eludes a tackle and steps up, slides for the first down at the 45-yard line of Auburn. The carry. Under seven minutes to go now. And in that game between Michigan and Indiana, some people that are predicting an upset there, but Denard Robinson, Indiana's going to have to figure out a way to contain him. Well, I think the way you contain him, and Indiana has a formula, offensively stay on the football field and score points, and Indiana can do that. And when you look at Michigan, in the past, Michigan has played defense pretty well. Right now, they've, they're giving up a lot of points, Michigan's defense. The game coming up at 3.30 on ESPNU. And another run for Don. Uh, remember, the coach was on the hot seat, wasn't he, early? <laughs> Rich Rodriguez, uh, all of a sudden now, you know, they've got a football team with a quarterback that can make a lot of plays with his legs and with his arm. It's amazing when you have a good quarterback, what happens to your football team. You become a better coach. Your offense becomes better. The quarterback is the key position in football, whether it's in high school football, college football, pro football. When you have a quarterback, and players understand you have a quarterback, he gives you a chance to win every time they step on the field of good ones, and they do that. Robinson with a bruised left knee suffered in that game last weekend against Bowling Green. We'll see if that slows him down at all. Indiana will take whatever help they can get this week against the Wolverines and Robinson. Third down and a yard to go. They give it again to Donald, and he lowers his head and picks up the first down with five minutes to go. ULM will move the sticks. They've been able to muster just a field goal here today. Auburn really from the opening kickoff has been dominant on both sides of the football offensively and defensively the warhawks here are, are doing a good job of, of, of really staying in the game and trying to compete and that's what coach berry wants to see right now regardless of what the score is go compete guys i want to see if you're going to compete donald will over left tackle for a couple of yards Donald had no carries coming into the day, and he's going to get a lot of work here in the final minutes of this one. Harris Gaston, number 58, there in on the tackle. Louisiana Monroe, the last team to beat Alabama in Bryant-Denny Stadium. That was in 2007, first year that Nick Saban was on the job, and things looked really low in Tuscaloosa at that time. Boy, have things changed. And ULM is not going to pull an upset here today. Out of the Wildcat formation, that's Zach Rhodes. Clock continues to move. If you're a Warhawk player right now, you really want to show the coach, hey coach, I'm about the program. I want to have an opportunity to play. I'm going to show you. It doesn't matter what the score is. I'm going to continue to play hard for you, and I'm going to try to get better. And that's what players have to do at this juncture in the football game. Continue to improve. Try to get better. Don't worry about the score. The score has nothing to do with how you need to play. Wells is incomplete. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Intended for Russell. And since they have nothing to lose, and pretty much four down territory anyway, Todd Berry is going to keep the offense out there. Todd Berry, a seasoned coach, we said before, head coach at Illinois State and at Army. This is just his first year on the job, just getting some things in place. He knows his team is young and the schedule not easy. This is the second of three SEC opponents this year for the Warhawks. Well, what he's going to tell his football team, penalties and turnovers, when you do that in football games, very difficult to win. Three for five this year on fourth down conversion attempts, and they're not going to convert here. Big hit. Ball pops loose. It's incomplete. Anthony Morgan, a big shot there in the secondary. And ULM turns it over on downs. Three minutes to go. Players slow to get up. Back in Auburn. All day, Trotter was in for a couple of series, scored his first career touchdown. Now here is Clint Mosley. 
running the offense for Auburn. And Gene Chizik just loves days like this when he can get guys experience. Well, in the meeting with Coach Chizik, uh, he reminded us uh, the last couple games, he's sitting there in the fourth quarter going, boy, this is a tough game. We've got to make a play to win it. Now, as a head coach, and I've been there, you want to stand on the sideline in the fourth quarter knowing that I've got a lot of my young players in the football game. We've got a comfortable lead, and now he's already thinking about next week. Trust me. Yeah, the last three games basically came down to the final play. The last two games, Auburn needed comebacks. They were down by double digits the last two games in the second half and still managed to win those games. This one has been a breeze basically since the opening kick. You've got to give Coach Chizik and his coaching staff credit for this because this is a game where they needed to come out fast and establish the tempo of the football game and make some big plays offensively, make some big stops defensively, and really play a game where really they should dominate, and they've done that today. Clint Mosley, 6'2", 223 pounds, a redshirt freshman out of Leroy, Alabama, playing for the first time this season at quarterback. We believe Trotter is out because he got dinged up on that play that he took into the end zone. And don't forget, coming up at 3.30 Eastern, Michigan at Indiana. Both teams undefeated. This is a big game in the Big Ten. Denard Robinson, he should be fun to watch per usual. Hooper again over the 40, down at the 42-yard line. And we're under a minute to go. Gene Chizik and the Auburn Tigers will go to 5-0 on the season for the second time in two years. Now he's just hoping that his team finishes strong. They go to Kentucky next week. And that will be the point of emphasis next week. Hey, man, we were in this situation last year, and we lost our focus. We don't want to have that happen to us this year. Let's focus in on this coming week as we prepare to play, and, and let's get this and keep this winning streak going. Mosley, he's going to pick up enough yards to give Auburn over 500 yards of total offense for the day. That is the sixth time since Malzahn became offensive coordinator that the Tigers have been able to do that. Impressive from start to finish. Cam Newton certainly in the Heisman conversation.